This is my sailing boat, Zephyr 4, a 10.4 metre westerly ocean quest built in 1993. Originally she had teak side decks, but when they wore through, they were removed and the decks covered with kiwi grip. Last year I noticed that bits of the kiwi grip were flaking off, and when, early this year, I pressure washed the deck, a lot more of it washed off, so I was left with no option but to remove it and refurbish the deck. So Jeffa 4 was lifted ashore and work began. As you can see about half of the kiwi grip has lifted off uh, from the pressure washer. But some of it is still stuck very fast and will need to be removed by other means. To start with I use this flat fronted scraper. It does sort of work and I thought that if I also heated the kiwi grip with a hot air gun it would come off easily but that didn't really work. Next thing I tried was a flat chisel. It certainly removes it, but it's a bit small and slow and you have to be very careful you don't go too deep. I also tried this good quality scraper. It tended to take the ripples off but wasn't very good at removing the bulk of the stuff. I also tried an orbital sander but even with high quality 40 grit abrasive pads it really only flattered the dimples and very slowly removed the remainder. And then by a happy chance while fiddling around in b and I came across this tool. It's a strong push scraper with a very sharp blade. I was also able to buy a box of spare base too and this gadget removes great chunks of the kiwi grip it sort of planes it off. It leaves little bits behind and then I use one of these tools to remove the rest. So it's a combination of tools that's enabled me to get on with this. Well we are progressing. This is the foredeck and though it looks a bit rough at the moment I have managed to remove all of the kiwi grip. It was covering a multitude of sins as you can see and there's a lot of repair work to do. Here are areas of exposed rovings which will need fiberglassing and the black markings show areas that will need filling with epoxy filler. Um, five days into this uh, uh, major deck refurbishment the deck paints off and we're, we're really into the sort of fiddling around around the cleats and the stanchion bases and things like that and the uh, area outside of the tow rails uh, which will eventually be nice and white uh, whereas the rest of the deck is going to be a cream sort of colour. The biggest problem at the moment is there are innumerable little holes and chips and what have you and it's a, just a long job filling those in it's, and, and, then, <laughs> and then sanding it down and then filling them in again and, and so forth. Not a job for the faint-hearted and I'm desperately trying not to be faint-hearted. It will get done eventually, but it is taking a long time and a lot of effort. It's hard work, but I'm earning my sailing this year, that's for sure. Here I am removing the last vestiges of the Kiwi grip using the flat chisel for hours and hours. Very hard on your knees. Well, we're on uh, week four of scraping and uh, preparing the deck for painting. And I guess uh, there'll be quite a few of you thinking, why the heck is it taking so long? And I must admit, I ask myself the same question some mornings. It's very, very hot here at the moment. We've had an amazing uh, May and June weather-wise. I've been so lucky with that. But it is getting very difficult to work. And as you can see, with the sun hat on, lots of sunscreen and everything else. The problem is that when the teak deck was taken off, it had been bedded down and screwed down and it did some damage to the uh, edge of the fiberglass underneath. Uh, the previous uh, people who worked on the deck uh, spent some time putting filler in and things like that but they didn't particularly prepare it all that well. They didn't sand it down very flat and kiwi grip being very gloopy and, and you know sort of fairly thick covered a multitude of sins. Well now that's gone I can see the sins and I'm going to put conventional paint and deck paint on and it's going to show very very quickly if I uh, 
uh, if there are any dents and things like that. So I'm being meticulous uh, and doing a lot of sanding by hand. The orbital sander doesn't seem to, to, to do it well enough, so I'm doing it by hand. And it just takes a long time. I wish it didn't because I was so looking forward to putting paint on. But there you go, I'll show you a little bit of what's going on and uh, the sanding and uh, maybe the filling, but it's just inch by inch all the way down these decks. So that's why it's taking so long. This is a good example of where the, the grooves are actually in the in the filler. They're not deep underneath it, so I just need to get rid of the filler and the grooves will disappear. My little mini sanding block. We're uh, almost at the end of the sanding and filling. Uh, the little black marks that you can see, the bits of tape, all the way up there, uh, are places I need to fill. Might be only a tiny little dimple, but it's uh, uh, it needs to be done. But they are getting smaller and smaller. And uh, we're running out of dimples to fill, which is great, because we're going to have to paint very soon. Well. Hopefully, I'm just about to start the last sanding episode. I've got me little sander and me flap sander, and there's about uh, ten, maybe maybe less uh, areas that I've just filled just last night, and hopefully they will be the last. And then we can start thinking about cleaning, masking, and actually putting some paint on this deck. This has been a long tedious job. I never ever want to do another one uh, and it's meant that the, most of the sailing season has now disappeared and I still haven't been sailing. So here's hoping that today uh, we can really move forward. Another day working on the boat. Today we're masking. Blue masking tape all the way up to the bow and uh, I'm almost down this side as well. There we go, just see where the uh, tape is, and I've got this, this lot to do, to the stern. It's uh, July the 18th, remember the boat came out of the water on the 9th of May. Admittedly I had a week then when I wasn't very well, but it's been hard at it ever since. But we are painting, uh, or I am painting is probably a better description. We're uh, uh, just putting the, the second coat of the undercoat onto the deck and all the hard work with all the filling and sanding is beginning to show because it's coming down reasonably well. A few little pimples here and there but by the time the deck paint goes on it they'll be well covered up no problem at all. So just a, a quick resume of what I'm doing and what I'm using. The undercoat is uh, international one up. It's actually a primer and an undercoat in one tin. It's a new product for this year. It's a one-pack uh, polyurethane paint, uh, which has had some good write-ups. So that's what we're using. It's pretty gloopy stuff. It's really quite thick. So uh, I've been using uh, a thinner. This is the thinner. It's quite clever because you can hardly smell it. Uh, uh, I, I don't know how they've taken the, the odor away, but it's, uh, it's pretty good. One of the reasons for the thinner is I'm using a roller to put the paint on and paint is exposed to the air and it's quite warm at the moment, it's 20 degrees and the paint thickens while it's in the tray. So by putting the thinners in, I get a longer working period and you do get a smoother finish. International don't recommend it, but 
Dave does. I'm using quite a small roller to roll the, uh, the paint on. There are very few areas that are big enough to use a big roller. So I'm using one of these. It's a, a four inch roller, slides on this little handle and uh, goes round and round and round nicely. This is a foam roller. I've tried various other rollers, but this one does the business. This one is neat, leaves a nice smooth finish, uh, and it just works so much better. The sort of woolly ones, as the paint thickens in the tray, it gets sticky and they tend to put it on and take it back off again as you're rolling it. So it leaves a very, very poor finish. This works really well. So uh, foam rollers, very effective. I've made a temporary mixing and filling area in the cockpit by covering a seat with a plastic bing bag held down with masking tape. I don't know if you can see this, but it's very gloopy stuff, like you can lay it almost flat and it won't pour out. So this needs mixing. And it takes a fair bit of work to get it going. I'm gonna add a bit of, uh, a bit of thinners to help with the, with the mixing. Though International don't recommend this, it, it really does help. Because it's really thick stuff. Well, I've been mixing for a bit now. And as you can see, that's, uh, that's coming out looking like paint now. So I'm going to pour this into the tray. There we go. top back on again because we don't want it to uh, be going off in the sun here. Um, never waste a bit. And we're off, uh, off up, up onto the deck now to start applying this. This is where we got to uh, yesterday. This is the uh, end of the session. So this is uh, just one coat on here. And you can see the problem, we you can't get the roller down the, the side here. And it's uh, far too narrow, so I brush uh, either side, like so. And uh, then a bit down the outside here. There we go, and now I can use the roller. Okay, we're going to fill the roller with the paint. Roll it up on there, distribute it around the roller. There we go. This is a, a foam roller, and uh, we can now apply that to the deck. As you see, it goes on lovely. Goes on very smoothly, no problems at all. There we go, two coats, snowy white decks. It's not bad, I'm reasonably happy with that. Well, this morning I've been rubbing down with 220 grip uh, the undercoat, the second coat of undercoat. And uh, we're now ready to put the uh, first coat of gloss on. And we're using uh, top lac, another one of the international's uh, paints, top lac plus oyster white. Uh, the boat, though it looks very white, is, is not. It's quite a bit creamy, and I'm not, maybe this will be a bit closer, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> they recommend here that you thin this 10% uh, up to about 20 degrees and 15% if it's over uh, 20 degrees. I mean, it's 25 degrees here at the moment. So I've made myself a measuring container. This is the bottom of a water bottle. And uh, this, uh, this blue line is, uh, is 10 centimetres. And this one's 11 centimetres. This uh, ordinary masking tape colour is 11 centimetres. So pour the paint in here up to the blue line. Pour the thinners up to that line. And that's 10%. And a little bit more would be 15%. So 
that's what we're going to do. Well, there's the first uh, coat of enamel on. It's gone on pretty nicely. That's a very good match with the existing fiberglass. And this is the second coat of gloss. It really is a good match with the remaining fiberglass. Well, we're really progressing with the deck now. I spent nearly two days masking all the lozenge shapes out all the way down and around at each of the uh, bits of deck furniture so it'll look nice when it's painted. The hard bits are getting the, uh, the curved inserts at the junctions. It's fairly simple, just use a tin and a pencil and, and then cut it out with a Stanley knife. Uh, but it's, uh, it's quite tedious and they've uh, got to be very careful. I've had several goes at some of them. Right, time for painting the deck using uh, International Interdeck, which is uh, a paint loaded with grit basically, which uh, will offer a, uh, a skid resistant surface. Non skid, non skid. Apparently, you, you can paint it straight out of the tin, no thinners, no anything. They do recommend that you use a mohair roller for the best thing well i haven't got a mohair one but i've got a nice floppy one here that and i think that will that will work quite well so um we're gonna get outside now uh clean each of the bits of the deck down with acetone before we uh before we start painting hopefully we're going to get this finished today it's two days later and two coats of the deck paint applied hadn't hardened off I'm just carefully removing the masking tape now. The blue stuff is great. It's been on for over a week, but peels off very easily. I'm so pleased with the color and the deck looks absolutely great. And here it is in action. Our first sail after the refurbishment. 30 knots in the Solent. We're having the time of our lives.